Good day, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be able to participate and join you all. Uh, for those of you in Austin and are all around the globe, join you virtually. Uh, my name is Nancy Jones. I am the Vice President of Clinical Development for Neuron Pharmaceuticals, and I'm pleased to be able to um, give an update today on our clinical development program uh, for Angelman Syndrome. Neuron is a biopharmaceutical company, and we are focused on um, rare neurodevelopmental disorders that have a high unmet medical need. We have two compounds in development, um, trifinitide and NNZ2591. A trifinitide is being developed for fragile X syndrome uh, and for RET syndrome. And the RET syndrome program uh, is now currently in phase three, and the phase three study is expected to have results um, by the end of this year. Um, NNZ2591 is being developed uh, for four different um, rare neurodevelopmental disorders, and it is NNZ2591 that is being developed for Angelman syndrome. So where are we at now in terms of uh, the whole arc of drug development? So um, as many of you know, um, for drug development, you go through a number of uh, key stages. Um, starting with the preclinical studies, which are your studies uh, in the laboratory, as well as your animal model studies. Then you have your clinical trials, uh, which have three major phases. Um, phase one, which is focused on looking at safety and dosing. Um, phase two, which is looking at safety, but then also looking at efficacy. And this is usually when you have your first studies um, in the patient population. And then phase three, which are your larger studies where you're looking at um, confirming efficacy as well as confirming your, your safety profile. And then once you've had your larger um, phase three studies and your data, uh, you can apply for new drug application uh, and get approval, and you may continue to do um, research um, post-marketing. So we have completed um, animal model studies as well as what are called the IND enabling studies, which are studies that you're required to do in order to be able to submit your investigational new drug, uh, drug application to the Food and Drug Administration. And we have com completed a phase one study um, in uh, healthy adults, and we are in the process of preparing for the phase two study in Angelman syndrome. So where does NNZ2591 fit in terms of uh, the range of other medi um, drugs, medications that are being developed for Angelman syndrome? So when you are developing a, um, a medication, new treatment, um, there are two kind of major approaches that you can take. Um, you can take a drug that's already uh, on the market, that's already out there um, for another indication and repurpose it for agent center for the new indication, or this can be done in the case if there are already sort of supplements, for example, uh, that people have access to can buy. Um, they can then be tested um, for uh, an indication in agent center. Or you can develop a completely um, novel drug, which is based from a sort of brand new uh, molecule, um, for example, and um, there are sort of three major types of approaches. Uh, you can have um, gene therapies, which are um, therapies or sort of treatments that are focused on correcting, uh, directly correcting the impairment in the gene. Um, neurobiological therapies, which are sort of downstream from the gene, meaning the gene um, results uh, in impairments in the, um, in the neurobiological system, so in a system in the brain where this, the, the cells connect with each other. Uh, and then you can have some treatments that are actually sort of really focused on specific symptoms. And NNZ2591 is a neurobiological therapy. Um, so what specifically is it and how does it work? Um, so it's helpful actually to sort of uh, be reminded of what the different types of cells are in, in the brain. Um, so um, it, you can see in the picture on the left here, you've got your neurons, which are the large cells in orange in the picture. Um, and these are the sort of main cells that you have throughout your brain, which are cells that sort of connect with each other via what are called the synapses, um, to basically to, uh, to support all the functions that your brain does. Uh, and then there are the supporting cells to the neurons, uh, which are shown here in the green, blue, and brown. And specifically, I'll highlight the, the microglia there on, in the little brown cell. Um, and these cells are all important for maintaining the growth and the structure uh, and the connectivity um, between the neurons. So these cells um, produce uh, an essential growth factor, which is called insulin uh, growth factor, um, like growth factor one, uh, or IGF-1. 
And IGF-1, when it naturally occurs in your brain, when it functions, it actually breaks up into smaller pieces. So uh, these pieces are called metabolites. Um, so you may have one metabolite that works, as you can see here on the cell surface, and then other metabolites that actually work in different parts of the system. And what NNZ2591 is, is a synthetic analog of one of those um, one of those metabolites called cyclic glycine prolate or CGP. Uh, and what CGP does is that it actually helps in maintaining uh, the bioavailability or sort of managing the levels um, of IGF-1. So um, when I say that NNZ251 is a novel synthetic analog of, of CGP, what does that mean? So well, CGP has a molecular structure and what NNZ2591 is, it has um, exactly the same structure, except for one small change. And that one small change um, gives it sort of properties which make it um, uh, better able to be used uh, as an actual, uh, as a medication. Um, so what that means is a consequence is because it has uh, almost exactly the same structure, it has the same actions as the, nat as the native um, metabolite. Uh, so it uh, has the same function of uh, maintaining uh, the bioavailability of IGF-1 as, as CGP does. Um, but this small change that we make uh, gives it properties that make it more amenable to be able to use as a medication. So in this case, uh, we've got good pharmacokinetic properties of NNZ2591, which is basically how the drug is used and absorbed. It crosses the blood-brain barrier, and it is 100% uh, bioavailable, which means all of the drug is able to be used and absorbed. Um, also, this change makes it possible to be used as an oral medication. So in this case, um, NNZ2591 uh, is available as an oral liquid formulation. Um, so uh, why is it, uh, well, how could it be helpful for, why is it applicable for, for Angelman syndrome? So um, in disorders that have, uh, like Angelman syndrome, that have problems with synaptic dysfunction, um, what we've seen is that NNZ2591 is able to um, correct these types of features that are often seen in disorders that have synaptic dysfunction. So for example, in your brain cells, when you've got a problem with the supporting cells, in this case the microglia, that are helping maintain the connections between the neurons, um, you could get as a result of that, um, uh, Impaired signaling between the cells, because the cells don't um, communicate with each other as well. You can also see uh, an increase in the inflammatory signaling molecules, and then also the bioavailability or sort of the avail availability expression of, of IGF-1 is also lower. So what we've seen in the preclinical studies is that NNZ251 treatment actually uh, corrects all of these uh, impairments. And what's important is that um, it, it corrects the impairment, but it doesn't actually have any impact on normal cells. Um, and that's actually important as you look down the road in terms of potential for safety, meaning it doesn't have any sort of potentially harmful effect uh, on the normal cells. Um, so specifically in AS, it has been observed that there are um, problems with the regulation of the strength of the uh, connections between the neurons. And there's also um, abnormal morphology or abnormal shapes, a density of the dendritic spines. And the dendritic spines are that part of the um, neuron that reaches out to receive the messages. Um, so we know from the pre previous preclinical studies that we, that the uh, NNZ251 can actually have an impact on these sort of cellular dysfunctions. And then also we have conducted a, a study with the mouse model of Angelman syndrome, and we were able to show that NNZ251 um, rescues the phenotype of the Angelman mouse model. Um, and this is uh, a summary of those results. This was a six-week study of, of NNZ2591 uh, in the um, Angelman uh, syndrome mouse model. And, and what you're looking then at uh, in all, each of the graphs uh, are the results from each of the sort of behavioral tests that we look, that we look at to sort of demonstrate the analogous behaviors um, to the phenotype. Um, as you can see, for example, we looked at anxiety, sociability, uh, memory cognition, as well as um, analogous behaviors of, of activities of daily living or functional behavior. And in each of the graphs, uh, what you're seeing in black or gray is the wild type mouse. So the mouse doesn't have any kind of um, genetic impairment. And the blue um, is the, the age of syndrome mouse. And on the left side of each graph, what we're seeing is their behavior when they're completely untreated. And as you can see, for each of the different um, uh, 
behaviors that we're, we're looking at that were tested, um, that you've got an impairment uh, in behavior in the age of a mouse. But when you look on the right, um, when this is the results from when they've been treated with NNZ2591, you can see that the behavior of the Asian syndrome mouse now is the same um, as the, the wild type mouse. So that we say that, that the it's been normalized or the phenotype has been sort of rescued. And you can also see that if the wild type mouse actually hasn't had any kind of any, any kind of impact, so there's no uh, harmful impact or sort of change in the normal behavior of the wild type mouse. So in summary, what do the preclinical studies tell us that's important for moving forward into the clinic? Uh, well, they show us one that NNZ can have effect on brain cells. Uh, it's showing that it can improve the analogous impairments in AS mouse model. And that mouse model also gives us some indication of, of what type of symptoms may possibly change when they go into the clinical studies. And what we're seeing is that an NZ251 has potential to improve impairments across a range of symptoms. So for our clinical studies, we've looked at a focus on, on safety and the pharmacokinetics in healthy adults, and that's in our phase one study. Um, and again, the, the we're looking at safety and tolerability and pharmacokinetics is looking at how the drug is absorbed and distributed um, and eliminated, um, in, this, in this case, healthy adults. Uh, there were two stages of the study, one just looking at um, single dose and the other looking at seven days of twice daily dosing. And uh, the participants either received NNZ2591 or placebo. And there were a total of 16 adults um, and there were two dose cohorts, one assessing a higher dose and one assessing a lower dose. So overall, in terms of the safety and tolerability profile, it was, it was, it was good. There were um, all adverse events were mild or moderate, and there were no severe adverse events or no serious adverse events, and no significant findings of the lab test, vital signs, or cardiac test. And we've found to have a predictable PK profile, so, so good properties in terms of how the drug is um, used and absorbed uh, in the body. So the next step is our phase two study in Angelman syndrome. This will be a phase two study. So the primary aim is to look at the safety and the pharmacokinetics. And the study is also going to look at clinical response uh, to the drug across a, a range of uh, different outcomes. Um, and it will be these outcomes that we'll look at to inform uh, the design of subsequent um, larger trials for, for phase three. Um, this study will be conducted in Australia. There'll be three sites. Um, they'll be recruiting up to 20 children, ages three to 17 and it's 13 weeks of treatment open label. Um, and it is, uh, as I mentioned before, an oral um, liquid formulation dose. So currently um, where we're at with the preparation for the study, uh, we have submitted the investigational new drug application to the FDA this summer, and we're responding to feedback from the FDA on the protocol design. And we are in the process of continuing with all the preparations uh, that are needed for the study coverage being suggested here. If you'd like to find out more information about this study, uh, the study is listed on clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, you can find it easily by searching Neuron and Angelman. And we also, um, as uh, new information comes out, we'll be posting our updates on our, our website. Uh, so if you go to our website, neuronpharma.com, if you'd like to get alerts, you can click on news and reports and sign up for, for email alerts. Well, thank you very much for your attention, uh, and I wish that you enjoy the rest of the conference.